Hey, let's talk about mathematicians versus scientists. A true Aristotelian slash Pythagorean slash Platonic scientist is someone who is in search of the truth, whatever that may lead him or her. Today's scientists, however, are actually not scientists. They are those who like to quantize and count. They are bean counters, but specifically we know them as what they really are, as mathematicians. And I am absolutely not against math. But let's make a really, really important distinction here, and it's something you've never been taught in high school or college, and then that is that math does not explain anything. It absolutely does not. You see, the ancient Egyptians, they were actually really good mathematicians. Yes, they were. You know, they built amazing stuff that stupid human beings today attribute to aliens. Like, oh my God, that's amazing. It must have been made by aliens. But they were really good mathematicians. Yes, but their explanations were, of course, BS, you know, like Ra, the sun god, you know, did this and that. And it just, of course, it was BS, but their math was really good. They built stuff that even today we can't replicate. Um, and of course, we actually have all these ideas in our heads, but ideas are also not uh, explanations. They are not understanding. Here's a perfect example, and scientists love to talk about this. They'll actually talk about the Michelson Morley experiment, but specifically the one that I hear most about is the dual slit experiment. It's about the phenomena and the characteristics, specifically the properties and attributes of light. However, the problem with this experiment, leaving out the math, is that it starts out with countless suppositions that are completely incorrect about the nature of light, such that light is an emission, which it's not. Light moves from point A to point B, which it's not. Light is a particle, it's not. Light is a wave which is not, light is a wave-particle duality, which is not, by the way, and there are no dualities in Mother Nature. Light has a speed, which it's not, light is not an emission, by the way. Yeah, it's an ether perturbation modality. Specifically, it's a coaxial circuit. The so-called speed of light is actually a rate of induction. The so-called presumed photon, which actually is purely conceptual, does not exist at all. This is actually due to the rarefactions and compressions, i.e. the longitudinal pulse perturbations that actually make up the coaxial nature of the transverse electrical magnetic phenomena that we call light. So this famous experiment, the dual slit experiment, starts out with a supposition that it understands the nature of light. And it absolutely doesn't. And if you actually don't understand what something is, your experiment will be based upon well, the conclusions thereof. Forgetting about the math, let's just say the math is accurate. And I have absolutely nothing against math, nor am I actually. And I had this debate recently with a, with a PhD physicist. I have a PhD in physics. I debated him like a month and a half. I like, is you, well, you do, do you dispute the math? And I hear this all the time. It's like, I, the math is not up for dispute. What is up for dispute is the fact that the math has no bearing upon the explanation of what is actually going on in the phenomena observed from beginning to end. But if you actually start out with false suppositions about the nature of the phenomena that you're testing and you do the test or the experiment, i.e. the dual slit experiment, which has been performed like millions and millions of times, your conclusions will be completely inaccurate. So this has nothing to do with the math. It actually starts with the false suppositions about the nature of the phenomena that you're testing in an experiment. There is no such thing, as, by the way, like a wave-particle duality. You'll actually hear this repeated a billion, billion times by so-called physicists and scientists who are not scientists, rather mathematicians, but duality means an inherent contradiction, and there are no dualities in nature. Just as a magnet technically actually doesn't have poles. Sure, a magnet has poles. It's got a north pole and a south pole. Everybody knows this. No, it's just that you simply don't understand the nature of a force vector, which is a three-dimensional. Specifically, is a three-dimensional S-curve, yeah? If you actually draw a two-dimensional S, like in the shape of a wire, and you bend either end of that S opposite to one another, you would get an insight, and that, of course, extrapolates out the interior geometry of a toroid. That is actual geometry, the initiatory geometry. Not the end or the middle, but the initiatory geometry of a force vector uh, in magnetism. This is why a magnet doesn't actually have poles. Conventionally, it has poles, but ultimately it doesn't have poles. Because, by the way, you could take a magnet and slice it a million, million, million times, like a hunk of cheese, if you could. Since they're ceramic, you kind of can't do that. But if you could, you can up to a point, actually. 
Each little slice will have a North Pole and a South Pole because it's point source incommensurability. When people actually use the word magnet, and I say to them, oh, that's wonderful. I love how you keep using the word magnet. Now, can you explain what a magnet is denotatively? They can't do it. The other one, of course, there are count, count, countless thousands of examples like this. People actually talk, well, look at this beautiful shell. You see, yeah, yeah, it actually follows the golden ratio. You look at that beautiful spiral golden ratio of these shells. That's fascinating. I was like, yeah, that's wonderful. Now, can you actually tell me what the golden ratio means? No. And I say, what is the golden ratio? Well, golden ratio is like spirals and, you know, uh, the things you see in nature. It's like... That's a description. That's not an explanation. Fools don't actually know. Intelligent people will give you a description. It's like, I got a college degree. It's like, good, you give me a good description. But you can't explain what it is. This is the same thing with uh, people with uh, doctorate degrees in physics and uh, astrophysics. Yeah, they can give you a description and they can give you the math. But they can't actually explain to you what's going on or why it's going on. It's like, well, yeah, I love your math and the math is not up for you to dispute. Now let's get on to the important stuff, which is where the whys are interested in dwelling. And that is in explanations, not descriptions. <laughs> By the way, the golden ratio, the explanation of what the golden ratio is the self-similarity of the one to itself, because of course the one in extrapolation is the reason why the golden, the Fibonacci sequence starts out with one and one, 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 Two, three, five, eight, uh, thirteen, et cetera, et cetera. It is the self similarity. In other words, it's the perfect proportionality of one to itself. That is what the gold is. People, say, people love, by the way, to say golden ratio. They're like, yeah, it's wonderful. I've heard you say golden ratio many times, but can you tell me what the explanation of what the golden ratio actually is and its importance? Well, no, I can't do that. Why do you keep talking about golden ratio? Well, because you keep seeing it as like beauty in nature. Now, this is a description. That's not an explanation, actually. Explanations are paramount. And by the way, it's not, it's, it's okay not to know the answers to things, but the stupidity, specifically the ignorance or agnosis, comes into the point where in which you have a person with a degree or that is highly educated, yet a moron. And this is a huge difference between empirical knowledge, i.e. episteme and gnosis, is that intelligent people who think they know the answers to things do not ever go looking. This is so important. You need to remember this. This is so effing important. And you were taught this crap in school. Intelligent people that think they know the answers to things have never gone looking for the answers to things that they already think they know the answer to. And this, of course, is part of their hubris. A word everybody should know, by the way, H-U-B-R-I-S. Hubris. Repeat after me the word hubris. Let's spell out hubris. D-U-M-B-A-S-S. -S. Hubris. <laughs> You don't go looking for the answers to things you think you already know the answer to. This is uh, called academic hubris. I got a degree. I know what's going on. Oh, you mean you went home and you memorized some crap and you took a multiple guess test and you got an A on it. And they said, yeah, yeah, we have a certified you that you believe in the same crap that we do because we were taught the same crap and we got a PhD on the wall there. We have certified that you believe in the same silly BS that we believe in. Here's your degree. <laughs> this is what college is, by the way. This is also, too, girlfriend, the reason why doctors violate the Hippocratic Oath. So what is the second leading cause of death after cancer? It's doctors! That's right. Doctors killing more people than everything except for cancer. First leading cause of death, cancer. What's the second leading cause of death? I don't know. Typhus, AIDS, herpes. No, it's doctors. It's little pencil-necked a-holes wearing white lab coats pretending to look more intelligent than they actually are. Doctors. <laughs> it's not funny, actually. Doctors kill so many countless thousands of people every month not every year every month it's unbelievable but yes the math is not up for dispute i have absolutely no problem with math math is great for uh, consistency repeatability observation um repeatability which is incredibly important and you know testing new theories this is all wonderful 
that you could have correct math but still not be able to accurately tell what's going on. This is too, by the way, is what Nikola Tesla meant when he said, there are those who can think deeply but not clearly. They are thoroughly insane. This is also the same reason why insane asylums are full of like really, really intelligent people. But they're there in insane asylums for a reason because they can't think clearly. They're insane! Literally, they're like people that are like grandmasters of chess. And you'll actually, you think they're crazy, but they're not. They'll be like doing three-dimensional trigonometry in their heads like this without a chalkboard. And, uh, you know, they've got fantastic memory. But they're crazy. They're crazy. The same guy that's doing, you know, trigonometry on an invisible chalkboard, really doing trig is the same guy that's like uh, flinging poop like a rabid monkey later in the evening and foaming at the mouth. And that's why he's in an insane asylum. He's a deep thinker, but he can't think clearly. He's nuts. <laughs> These are all the long-haired hippie crackpots that uh, uh, that are teaching uh, people's children in high school and college. They're insane. There are no dualities in nature, and there's nothing wrong with math. Uh, the point is, is that there's a huge difference between... And this is the reason why... IQ tests are not important. I actually once went to a Mensa meeting. I was invited. I was like, you're a really intelligent guy, Ken. You need to come join us at the Mensa meeting. It's like, ah, whatever. And I met some of the dumbest people I've ever met. And they said, incredibly intelligent, but they were idiots. I, it was actually an enlightening experience. Even though I was bored out of my skull, I met some of the dumbest arseholes that I've ever met in my entire life. Like, this guy, he, <laughs> I mean, I literally met some... Really high IQ individuals, but they were bat poop crazy. They were nuts. They were fools. They had no wisdom at all. They didn't know what the hell was going on. These are the same people that think metaphysics is one thing and physics is another. Like, there's several different branches of science. And, you know, we got physics here. And it's like, no, everything is one. Everything is one. That sounds really deep. But, I mean, it's true. Everything is just a different facet of ultimate reality. There's no such thing as physics versus metaphysics. It's like talking about the head side of a coin versus the tail. It's like, this, that's what an idiot would say. What is the head side and it's the tail side? And the wise person goes, you know, you take the head and the tail, they're both one and the same thing because you look at it edge on and you're looking at the silver of the coinage. There's no such thing as a head and a tail. It's all the same thing, which is the coin. Comprised, depending on the coin, you know, silver, gold, copper, nickel. It's, it's all the coinage. And this, kiddies, by the way, is the difference between empirical knowledge and wisdom. And uh, I really don't have any respect for intelligent people. Why they're better than, uh, you know, you know, like hairy knuckled idiots that like only have sex and drinking on their mind. I really don't think of them much more highly than those folks. It's like some of the most reprehensible people I've ever met in my life. Well, there's a high IQ individual. It's like, yeah, he's also a fool. He's a demonic unwise by the way someone who has no wisdom of course is you know in the old english a fool there are extremely intelligent fools out there a lot of them a lot of them are in academia i have a phd i just graduated yeah you spent a lot of money in seven years in college it's like oh good you're gonna make a great doctor yeah call me at the end of the year and let me know how many patients you killed and violated your hippocratic oath I love it when people giving people uh, chemotherapy. He said, we cured him of cancer. That's, by the way, that's how you cure so many cancer. He said, like, yeah, but you killed him. Yeah, but he doesn't have cancer anymore. <laughs> it's like, yeah, but you killed him in the process. It's amazing how many people actually believe in chemotherapy. We, we, we cured his cancer. Yeah, but you killed him in the process. Yeah, but he's cured of cancer, though. And that corpse has got no cancer at all. <laughs> It's not funny, actually, but it kind of is. <sighs> mm, yeah. I hope you like these videos. If you do, please click the link below. Or you can tell me how much you hate me. Peace out, Girl Scout.